Welcome to lesson 51 of Wednesdays with Ewat or English with a twist. Hello everyone, this is Shanti Kumaraswamy Street, your business English coach here at English with a twist on Wednesday the 17th of January. So do tune in, let me know if you're coming into this class and say hi. I hope my regulars are going to start coming in. That'd be wonderful. And how are you all doing today? Um, it's uh, very cold here in London. And um, tell me where you're from. If you're my regulars, say hi. And uh, let's get this uh, class going today. So as you're coming in, I'm just going to refresh my page, the Facebook page, to make sure that I can see all your comments. So, hi everyone. Happy New Year. If it, this is your first time signing in to 2018's series of lessons, I hope you're well. I hope the, the New Year has brought in good news, good vibes, and that you're raring to go for the New Year. January can be quite tough, isn't it? I mean, January can bring in the blues, where you're feeling a bit you know not so great and you're not feeling so good i see christina hi milan ciao milano it's freezing today also there yeah it's super cold here christina hi 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 ted hi gabby lovely to see you. i'm so glad you could make today's class hey everyone hello um so yes yeah, so january as i was saying can sometimes feel a bit you know the blues you had this break for over christmas and you come back in everyone's talking about new resolutions everyone's thinking about planning and what to do and sometimes you're not as excited as an enthusiastic as maybe other people are or maybe what you think other people are like and so the weather's not so great particularly if you're in the northern hemisphere it's cold, it's windy, maybe it's snowing where you are. So it's very hard to find that excitement and enthusiasm. The nights get, uh, you know, the dark morning, wake, you wake up and it's still dark. So gosh, getting up every morning is really difficult. But hopefully um, things are getting, you know, going to get better as we progress. I think by the time you get to mid-January, things start getting a bit better. We're beginning to, to, to see this very long month gradually coming to the end. Because I don't know about you, but when I was in the corporate world and I earned a salary, oh, that was a long time ago, um, before Christmas, you would be paid maybe a week before your normal salary uh, date, you know, because to cover the Christmas period. But then the problem was that, you know, January is such a long month. So this month would just, you know, be pulled and pulled and pulled. In the meantime, you've had maybe credit card bills. You've paid for all the Christmas shopping and all that presents. And it just never feel, you know, it feels like January is never going to come to an end. I don't know about you, but, you know, I remember it feeling like that. So that can also add to that blues. Then you've got all the planning, you're thinking maybe I need to lose weight, maybe I need to get fit, maybe I need to do this, 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 and you start thinking about it and then gradually, by the time February comes, you've changed a lot of plans. But we will be talking about planning and staying motivated in our next month's theme and we'll be working on that, so stay tuned. In the meantime, in this month, um, if you remember from last week's lesson, I said this month's theme is all about small talk. And I have also changed the format. If you recall, I was saying that every month now I will be choosing a theme and my content, whether it's in my weekly lessons, Wednesdays with Ewat, and anything else I'm talking about sharing on social media will be about that particular theme. So this month is all about small talk. And last week we looked at um, the areas of small talk that we need to, you know, so lesson 50, actually, you know what, I am going mad, um, was the 10 tips on how to master small talk. And this week we're going to be looking at six reasons why small talk can lead to better business for you. Now, this um, this lesson comes from a post that one of my fellow teachers, 
Christina Rabufe Brutus wrote for me on English with a Twist last year. She, like me, is a business English teacher and she's based in France and she wanted to share her thoughts on how small talk can lead to better business in um, for all of us. And she gives six reasons. And so I thought, what better way than choosing um, her post to share with you here on Wednesdays with Ewat. Oh, thank you so much, Rosie. I'm so glad you like my flowers. I picked them specially for all of you, for you and my fellow Ewaters. Um, in fact, every week I buy myself flowers because I don't know how many of you have husbands or boyfriends who buy you flowers. If you do, hold on to that man. My husband, whilst I love him dearly and he's wonderful, he just can't get into the habit of buying me flowers. So I'm, you know, a, I'm a feminist. I believe in gender equality. So I just buy myself flowers. And so that's what you see behind me. In fact, my grandmother was, um, I remember my grandmother used to always say to me that yellow and pink are the colors that suit me the best. So th these flowers are for my grandmother. Just thought I'd say, oh, this is getting a little, uh, little sentimental moment there. Okay, let's go back to the job in hand. We are talking small talk here. And today's topic is looking at six reasons why small talk can lead to better business. Now, what I'd like to ask you before we start on this lesson is how many of you are comfortable engaging in small talk? In your language, for example, because not everyone likes small talk, even in their language. How many of you? Can you give me a thumbs up? I'm looking here in the chat box. Just want to share. Let me know. Um, are you comfortable with small talk? Do you enjoy it? Do you... Do you find it natural for you? Yes, Rosie is saying yes, she likes small talk. Um, so you don't have a problem engaging. And in your culture, is it something that is expected? You know, you get engaged in small talk. There are some cultures where you should just go straight down to business in a business meeting. You don't discuss this. Uh, uh, oh, Aunt, you're saying yes. So, yes, you, you are comfortable in small talk in your own language. Okay, so how about in English? Do you engage in small talk at the moment? Do you, uh, and if you do, do you enjoy it? Uh, do, do you get a lot of reward? Shema, you're saying you're, you're comfortable uh, with small talk in your language? And what about also in English? Are you comfortable engaging in it? So you're comfortable with it. You don't have an issue. Now, what does small talk give you? What benefits do you get in engaging in small talk? Um, there's Sonia saying small talk is very common in barbershops and parlors in the Philippines. <gasps> you know, that is so wonderful. Excuse me whilst I digress for a minute. Because, Jason, you've just given, you know, I just want to share something with you. Sorry, this is typical small talk. I'm digressing now. Jason, you just made me, uh, you just reminded me. Uh, last year, I went, you know, I don't know, some of you may have been following me a while. You know that I love going to the theatre. And I'm very lucky that in London, we have a lot of very good theatre productions. And Interestingly, talking about barbershops and talking about small talk, Derson, you just reminded me. I went to see our most wonderful play uh, called The Barber Chronicles. So all these were conversations that happened in barbershops. Now, this had to do very much with the African culture. So barber, and so they, they, this uh, play was set in different places in Africa. So it was uh, in Lagos. So that was Nigeria, in Accra in Ghana, uh, in uh, Zimbabwe, so um, in Zimbabwe, South Africa, in Johannesburg, and and what else? Let me see, let me think. Uh, so and, and it was London. So we had London, Ghana, Nigeria, um, South Africa, and 
Zimbabwe. And of course, and, and so these are all set in these barbershops. And it's where all the men congregate, they get together, and there's a lot of chit-chat and small talk going on. And it was such a wonderful thing. I mean, the play was very much to look at the cross-cultural, the multicultural uh, melting pot that the UK is. And especially in London, we have a lot of people, uh, you know, who come from Africa, who are in, in the UK. But also, interestingly, um, a lot of the areas in London where we have a lot of um, African um, um, ethnic um, ethnic origins, we also have people who come from the Caribbean, the West Indies. And of course, they come from the African slaves that moved there in the previous centuries. And it's interesting because in this play, they were showing us about the differences between how the Africans considered the West Indians, the Caribbeans, because they're just Caribbeans, they have different ways and different cultures. And it was just wonderful and I loved it. The, the play was just wonderful to see the small talk and it was also talking about the um, the political and economical situ economic situations that were going on in these countries and the legacy of the British Empire in these countries in on the continent of Africa. So, sorry, I know I've completely digressed, but this is one of the things I love about theatre, about how much you learn about the different cultures and the historical connections that we have. And it's fascinating. It was really good. But so it's so good to see that in the Philippines, so the barbershops is where you have a lot of small talk being engaged. Yes. And, you know, you see it in everywhere, in cafes, in, 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 in plenty of places. But it's funny how in business, when we have to engage in business and then you're having to engage in small talk in a language that is not your own, then everything starts becoming much more uncomfortable and you feel a bit out uh, out of your comfort zone yeah so it's this big comfort zone that worries a lot of people but um that's uh that's great sorry I'm, i was i just digressed but jason it's your fault because you told me about small talk in the barber shops and i thought yeah and you know that's not just in the philippines it's everywhere particularly the african and the um caribbean uh, cultures where you have that and I think also in the Middle East you have a lot of that sort of idea where men get together and they have they chat a lot and they talk about all sorts of things and it's and it's great okay so let's go back to uh, small talk and now why have I got this theme about small talk first of all is of course can I just all remind you that this Friday the new version of my small talk to go ebook is, is going to hit the eWat e-store. So, ta-da, lots of trumpets, um, my new version. Now, what's new about this version is that I have added an audiobook to the e-book I launched last year. So, Small Talk To Go is um, a book of recipes, of scenarios where you could imagine yourself being in business situations where you would need small talk. The audiobook will allow you to hear those conversations. So these are the. Um, this is go this is all a prelude to the book that will be launched on Friday. So if you're already a member of the Ewood community, keep an eye out for your inbox in your email. You will receive an email from me on Friday morning and introducing you to the new version, and that's where also you get your special Ewood offer for the book for one week um, where you can get the book for a special price. If you haven't joined the eWord community, then please do so. And I'll make sure that my new subscribers also get access to that. If not, don't worry, I'll be sharing details on social media here on Facebook. So if you haven't joined the eWord community, do so. Otherwise, keep an eye out. If you're already in the eWord community, then Keep an eye out for the email on Friday. Gabi, you said, small talk is an icebreaker, especially whenever you arrive at a seminar too early and you have to wait. What did you just say? You have to wait more than 15 minutes for the lecturer to come. you very good point. Exactly. So if you are attending a seminar or a training course 
and um, you know you're just sitting there you could either sit and read and pretend nothing unfortunately with our smartphones that's what a lot of people tend to do you know they all sit there with their smartphone nobody's looking at each other or like you say Gabby it could be sorry I hope you don't mind me calling you Gabby or Gabriela please let me know um, then you could engage with the person sitting next to you uh, and you know just say oh hello or, you know oh yes is this your first time to this talk or you know or whatever so it's great it's a great way of breaking that ice and getting to know the people around you and it's a great way for meeting different people uh, it might be that you know they are uh, depending on the seminar you're in so training courses and funny with the uh, small talk to go book I in fact cover one of the scenarios is to do with training courses where you're meeting people in the same industry as you but people you've never met before so you have a few things in common but not everything and it's a great way then to find out more about them okay let's look at these six reasons they're nice that's in one reason it's an icebreaker so again small talk is a wonderful way of breaking the ice and there are different ways you can do that now if you're my eword community uh, on thursday tomorrow you'll be receiving your weekly lesson instead of friday and i'm looking at some um, different questions you could ask um, in small talk scenarios to make your small talk spicier so you know stay tuned for tomorrow's email so there's a lot happening this week um, so Christina shared with me last year this post and she was saying about sharing with you six reasons why small talk can and does lead to better business. So let's have take a look at reason one. Oh, don't worry Keiko, lovely to see you, better late than never. Wonderful, join us. Well, we're just uh, looking at the theme again is small talk and we're just looking at the six reasons why small talk leads to better business. And these are ideas that have come from my fellow teacher, Christina Rabuffe. And um, so the first reason she gives is that you don't know where the conversation will take you. Now imagine, yeah, that, that's quite a good reason, isn't it? If you start your conversation with some small talk, you just never know where that conversation could take you. So for instance, you know, you're meeting someone who's fairly new to you or you know and you know you start talking you start engaging with them um, discussing maybe things that have got nothing to do with business and then the conversation leads to you know what is your line of business what do you do what are you involved with and as you progress in this conversation it could be that the person then ends up going oh it's fascinating what you do um, I'm, I'm intrigued could, do you have a business card because, you know, I'm, I am thinking of, um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, for example, if you were a decorator, painter and decorated something, yes, I'm thinking of having my, you know, my house um, redecorated. Do you have a card? That'd be wonderful. Um, or, you know, so you just really don't know where this conversation could lead you. Or it could lead you to uh, meeting someone new. Or it could lead you to discovering something that you didn't know about. So opening yourself up to small talk can lead you down the road that you never thought of going down. Yeah, who knows? It's a great um, unknown. Now, some people get scared about that or you can just think, wonderful. You know, I'm always interested. If you're interested in people, if you're interested in finding out more about people, then you will be interested in knowing. And the more you talk about people, the more you'll find out. And they could lead you to maybe being recommended to someone else. Who knows? Vasiliki, ciao. Ciao. Ooh, we are being very international. Ciao a tutti. So hi to all. And Rakesh, hi. Nice to see you here. So, yeah. So who knows where that conversation can take you? So why not try it? Yeah. Now, the second reason that Christina shares with us is that because it improves your English. Really? God, you know, I never thought of that. That's rather logical, isn't it? Think about this. I don't know how many times, and Christina shares this with me too, that how many times 
um, my learners, my clients, or even yourselves might have said to yourself, oh, you know, I don't know any, I don't have anybody I can practice my English with. I don't have a speaking partner. I don't have a language exchange partner and I don't know what to do. Um, um, oh, I'm just sorry. I'm just being interrupted here. Just and say it'd be wonderful hearing some tips later on how to end the small talk. Ah, okay, Jerson, yes, I need you, you need to look at my tips. Last week's lesson looked at that, but yes, I will make a note of that. But last week's lesson on the 10 tips on how to master small talk, one of them is how to end the conversations. And my book where also covers that because it gives you the whole conversation, how to start it, how to continue it, and how to end it. So, but I'll give you a couple of tips. Um, or maybe some of you here from the EWOT community would like to share with Jerson your um, tips on how to end small talk in a good way, you know, and not just walk away halfway through this conversation. All right, let's look at improving our English. Small talk could improve your English. It's true. You don't have a language exchange partner. You don't have a speaking partner. You don't have opportunities to practice your English. Well, then use small talk. Imagine you are going to meet some foreign foreign um foreign clients or foreign visitors to your company and that's an ideal time to practice with them okay some of you are going to go oh, but shanti my english is not good enough it doesn't matter you've got to try you've got to start somewhere you know it's like doing sport right if you don't start and if you don't do then you're never going to get better so you've got to start, you've got to be strong, challenge yourself and just do it. So whether it's welcoming this new foreign visitor to your company, maybe you have to show them around the premises, maybe you are uh, welcoming them because maybe you're the receptionist or maybe you are the personal assistant to the, you know, the main person or one of the directors, then use that opportunity to practice your English with them in by engaging with small talk because that small talk is not the crucial part of the business you know so you can engage and be friendly and you know sort of you know find out how they are would they like a coffee you know great ways of doing that so practice you know use that as your as your excuse and it's a wonderful excuse that way the third reason then she comes up with, she says, because it's nice. Okay, I don't like the adjective nice. We need to, to find another word. So what sort of adjectives could we use instead of nice? Because it's interesting, it's exciting, it's stimulating, it's pleasant. Yeah, lots of different adjectives. If you ever want to know how to find different words, make sure you have a very good thesaurus with you to see what other words you can use instead of nice. Uh, Gabriella, you're saying that's absolutely true. There aren't so many opportunities to chat and practice your English. Exactly. So when you do find yourself in a situation where you can engage in small talk, take that opportunity because, you know, it's always great. Use any opportunity you have to practice your English with someone else. And it doesn't matter if your tenses are not so, you know, correct or you can't quite find the right word. It doesn't matter. Just do it. So you have some, I'm getting some very, nice, very good alternatives to nice, wonderful, amazing, intriguing, awesome. Yes. Yeah. So because, you know, engaging in small talk is wonderful. It's amazing. It's intriguing. Why is it intriguing? Because I might discover something interesting about the person I'm talking to. Or maybe that person is incredibly boring, but who knows? But there's always something interesting to learn. You can learn from somebody. And and also, it's great. It's awesome. It's, it's, it's great to... It's so much nicer, isn't it? It's so much more pleasant to talk about your weekend, to talk about something that happened, uh, uh, you know, at the weekend, or to share a story, or to share some, an experience that happened to you the week before. In last week's weekly lesson in uh, on um, 
on my blog, I shared exactly one of these examples, which was share a story, share a past experience when you're engaging in small talk. You know, something ha funny happened to me uh, on my way to work today. You know, I was just, um, you know, closing my front door when something happened and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you start talking about it and, you, and the other person might go, oh, yeah. And then they might want to exchange um, an idea with you or, or their experience. Yeah, Rosie's saying incredible, amazing. Yeah, and, and it's cool. Yeah, some, you know, some, some people say small talk is cool. I like it. I enjoy it because I get to find out about people. Um, oh, you like my haircut? Thank you, Vasiliki. Sorry, this is, um, this is um, a woman moment when I just like, oh, oh I've just gone, gone off the digressed yet again. So it's, um, you know, it's, yeah, talking about um, past experiences. And I shared this in the blog post last week. So if you you re you are part of my EWAT community, you would have received that weekly lesson where one of it was to talk about your past experience. Um, sometimes we even think about maybe something funny or something where you, um, yeah, something funny. For example, let me share with you. My husband was telling me, um, it was, um, he was in a presentation. He wasn't giving the presentation, but he was listening into a presentation and, um, the presenter, oh, and he put his hand up because he had a question for the presenter. So the presenter is talking and then he says, oh, hello. Um, he goes, yes, um, yes, uh, Mr. Street. Um, what's your question? And my husband said to me, do you know? The moment he said, yes, and your question, the question I had completely went from my mind. My mind just went blank. He completely forgot the question he wanted to ask. And it's just, so he's panicking, thinking, oh no, now I'm gonna look like a right idiot. So what does he do? So he said, so what I did was I started talking about the company and I, he just started talking, rambling, talking. Well, you know, I think it's very interesting what you're saying. And I don't know, he was just talking. He was trying to buy some time. In the meantime, his brain was trying really hard to remember what he, he what his question was meant to be. And then he said, luckily, after about half a minute to a minute, so this was a long time, uh, he, he remembered the question and he went, ah, yes. And uh, so my question is, so he was trying to make it out so smoothly so he wouldn't have to worry. And I remember just as I was listening to him, I was just laughing because, you know, when you come to a certain age, like we are, um, you know, I'm talking about my husband. It's funny because you must have moments when, you know, you've forgotten what you went into that room to do. Or you have those memory lapses and you think, oh, I completely forgot what I was about to do. Oh, no. Now, it's great if you can share your weaknesses with someone else. Because, uh, tell me, don't you, don't you think that it's so annoying when someone tells you all about their successes. You know, I had a wonderful week. My month was fantastic. I, you know, my sales record was fabulous. But, and you're like, uh -huh, this is wonderful. That's great. Yeah. I, I don't want to talk to you. Thank you. Because, you know, we always, I'd like to see that you, you do have a human side. So if we can share a little failure or a moment, a funny moment where, you know, you completely forgot the question you were about to ask, it is or it immediately creates empathy with the other person, doesn't it? Because you suddenly think, yeah, that happened to me too. And then you're more likely, I don't know about you, but I am, to share another experience that happened, you know, to you. And because, yeah, I know that happened to me the other day. And then suddenly you have this thing in common where you're laughing and you're thinking, yeah, yeah, well, really, it's so funny, you know, so it's this, you know, just so weird and, you know, and so you've got this shared experience, which came from something that wasn't a success. It could have been more sort of like a little failure or a little, you know, and you make it funny and you share that. And we all like to, you know, to, to have that. So you, you think, oh, phew, so I'm not, you know, I don't have to be perfect all the time. You know, and that's the thing. And it could be also with your English. Maybe you just like, you know, the other day I completely forgot. You know, and that's why teachers, where as teachers, 
you know, if we've learned another language, I often like to share with my clients my issues sometimes when I can't remember the word in, in Italian or I can't remember a word even in English. And it, it's okay to make a mistake. And if you share that with people, people realize, okay, it's not just me. And that's where you create the empathy between people. And that's through small talk. So it's nice. Share your weekend. Share what your child did. Share what a colleague did, which was so funny. And then you start exchanging stories. So that's number three, small talk, because it's amazing. It's cool. It's wonderful. It's awesome. It's just makes it enjoyable. Yeah. Number four, Christina shares with us is because you're a friendly, sociable person. Yeah. So let's look at what she talks about. So number four, she says, now, most of us, most businesses like to think that people deal with us because we are professional, because we have the best service, because we have the best product, because we have the best price or the most competitive price. And particularly if you're in a business which is service oriented. And so what I mean by service oriented is that you are providing a service to your clients. So you're building that client relationship. So it's important that your relationship is good, it's strong. Um, now, some companies will think, well, the, pers the clients deal with, with us because we are a strong brand, we are a strong uh, company, we are this, that and the other. And I know for a fact, in the years that I was in, in, corporate, uh, in the corporate world, you know, I worked for big companies, but the, my clients didn't deal with my company. They dealt with me. Why? Because they dealt with me because I was the face representing the company. I was the person representing them, my company. But I was their go-to person. So if they had a problem, if they wanted to talk to me about something, if they needed to uh, solve a problem, if um, they were looking for portfolio solutions, an investment solution for their clients, if they wanted to share some ideas, it was me they would talk to. Or if they needed to get the best deal for their client, and so I would try and find the best package for my client. Now, what we offered as a company wasn't so much more different from our competitors. So how we could stand out as a company would be down to you as the person. So what is your unique selling position? What is your unique selling proposition? And often it is you as that person. It's not the brand. Depending on the brands, of course. But, you know, think about what you offer. People come to you because of you. You know, I, you, they can get maybe the same service everywhere else, but they come for you. Why? What do you offer them? So... It's important then that you are sociable, that you engage with them in a good way. In the, um, Vasiliki, you're saying a company is nothing more than its employees or employers. Same goes for a classroom, school, etc. You talk about your, their employees, right? Yeah, a company is their people. Without the people, the company does not exist. So, the same with classroom, the same with schools. Teachers, if you think back about your, your, your school, it wasn't the school, it was the teacher, wasn't it? Who made the most impression on you? Who makes you want to go back and see? The, it's, it's the teacher. It's, it's that experience they have with you. You know, it's the experience they offer you. So that no matter what price you have, it's the user experience, is what you're offering them. Now, uh, my mother is listening into this conversation, into this class, and I'm really super proud of my mom because my mom volunteer teaches English um, twice a week. And I don't know what my mother does, but she's got this most incredible loyal following of her 
class. She gets so many gifts from her students. Now, they're all adult learners. Uh, some of them are still working. A lot of them are retired. So they are adult learners, mature learners. She brings in an enthusiasm into teaching English and they just love her. They just absolutely love her. And so for them, the value is, is her. It, it's what she brings in. So if you're going to forge a rapport in business, in any of our human relationships, it's what we bring. So people are going to want, so basically what I'm saying is, people are going to do business with us because we are, okay, I'm going to use the lazy word again, nice people. We are people who they can approach. They can get an answer. We are people who are helpful, approachable, friendly, um, people they can talk to, and very importantly, people who will listen. If you want to succeed in small talk, more than anything in the world, you need to be a good listener. Be prepared to listen to the person who's speaking to you. Um, be prepared to um, engage with them, but engaging is listening to them. We all want to be listened to. So the more we listen, then the more people will respond to us. And so that's what we're doing. My mom is saying, I'm a mafia girl, don't forget, I scare them. No, she's she, nonsense. She doesn't scare, well, she does. She scares her children, but um, not her, not her students. Well, maybe they're a bit scared, but they love her all the same. You know, she gets so many gifts. I know, I'm very jealous. Maybe I need to know what her secret is. Okay, but importantly here, this is it. You know, you can be the most professional person. You could be the person who's a genius, who knows everything you need to know about, I don't know, whatever, about your subject. But if you are arrogant, if you are unfriendly, if you are impatient, if you don't listen to people, they're not going to deal with you. They're just not going to want you. It has to be a really niche area of your business where people are still forced to use you because nobody else can do the work you do. But if there are 10 other people who can do it or even one other person that can do it, they're going to go for the person they like doing business with. So small talk is you, you're a nice person, engage in it. It shows that you are friendly, you're approachable and uh, they want to do they want to, to do business with you. And that's where it's going to lead to better business. Because, of course, all businesses, small, medium, large, depend on recommendations. If you offer great service, people are going to recommend you. And the best business comes from recommendations. Um, because then you're not having to sell yourself so much. So, you know, and it doesn't take much to engage in small talk, to just listen to what the person has said uh, have that small chit chat before you get on to business. So if a client comes to you or if a student comes to you and says, I've had a really bad day and you just ignore them and move on to the business, you know, stop and listen and get involved in that little small chit chat of really, why, what's the problem? I'm so sorry. Well, yeah, listen. And maybe if you can offer advice, great. If you can't, just listen to them. Then once you've listened to them, then you can move on and start talking business. You know, it's all about empathy. I know, I'm sure I'm not saying, and I know I'm not saying anything that none of us know. But it's amazing how some people just don't do it. And I think, why? It takes so little to do this. Okay, that's reason four. Because it makes us into a more approachable, friendly person. And people do business with people they like. Number five, and this is a great reason that Christina shares with us, because you can learn something. How many of you have engaged in small talk and whilst engaging in small talk, you find out something new about something you never knew or you learn something new? Maybe there's a new app that is going to make your life so much easier. Maybe it's a time management app or it's a new app for you to listen to your favorite podcast or it is a new app to learn about, I don't know what. Um, or it is something, maybe it's a new program that you hadn't heard about, but it's going to be really invaluable to help you maybe do your work much more easily, 
or make your life easier or maybe learning about a new culture learning about a different way of cooking a recipe you know you maybe you only know how to cook kale in one way and then you discover actually there's a new way to cook kale and you think wow great hey can i have the recipe could you send me the recipe that sounds so interesting and you make that for person feel good because hey they've just taught you something and um yeah because you could be in danger of learning something through small talk and isn't that wonderful because when you start chatting you learn something new and i always love it because there's this expression in english and i'm sure it's also in your language you learn something new every day and anyone with a growth mindset is always going to want to learn something new vasili ki you said small talk even on messenger chat is being has offered me a great deal of new new things yeah i know well forget just messenger social media the chit chat that you get through social media has taught me so much how about you don't you find that you're learning discovering new things okay sometimes it's a bit too much but you can filter some of it and just think oh that's new i mean i've learned so many new resources that maybe other fellow teachers are using my business clients are using Oh they go you know Shanti I I watched them really fascinating can you share that with me oh wow I never knew about this or maybe there's a new scheduling app that I can use and it's going to make my life so much easier or I've learned the the you know the pleasures of I don't know what doing something new you know who knows or maybe you're looking to for some good books on coaching or mindfulness or doing yoga and you start chatting and you know maybe someone's talking you are talking about hobbies and they say yeah I like you oh really how long have you been practicing yoga and how long and i know vasiliki i think you're a you're a master master in yoga i think judging from what other fellow teachers have told me you know and then you pick your pick their brains you know we have an expression in english pick someone's brains you know get information from them everyone likes to hear talk about themselves share their information and you know that's great so hey you learn something new wonderful so tell me in the last week what is have you learned anything new through small talk can you just take 30 seconds to share with me anything new you've learned through small talk <laughs> vasiliki yes yeah guys tell me soul dynamics is we call it otherwise is something dry. so dynamics yeah basilic interesting word um yeah in the last week think anything new you've learned through small talk through engaging in small talk something new that you didn't know about anyone share with me please i'm waiting on the chat box in the chat box i'm trying to think back on engage i mean i've had so many um where i've learned some new because i'm you know constantly I'm I'm redeveloping repackaging my my business so I've been looking at different ways so people start talking to me so I've been I I learned that there are some new time management tips um okay some news that I missed seeing okay so some people will say oh well, you know did you hear about this or and you didn't know about it yeah and then so you've learned oh I didn't know about this and um great so it's it's a great way of doing it um or maybe you've been you know looking for something and then someone tells you oh yes i know where you can find that uh have you tried this oh great thank you do you know i've been trying everywhere to find it thank you so much wonderful if you hadn't engaged in small talk you wouldn't have found out um a couple of british expressions you've never heard before vasiliki can you remember what they are would you like to share them here in the chat box um what have uh, i've never heard before um no i've never heard before is fine you don't need to put the of if you don't want to um please share because i might not have heard of them either uh, you know i'm always learning too i've been in this country for longer than i've lived in malaysia and italy and i think a few weeks ago i learned some new expressions i really never heard of them so it's great finally reason 6 the final reason that christina shares is <clears throat> which made me laugh was because you don't have a choice you don't have a choice well 
What do you think about that? You don't have a choice. You have to engage in small talk. Vasiliki, going back to the one expression, you're on the ball. Okay, do you know what that means, Vasiliki? I mean, did you obviously discovered what it meant. So what does it mean when if someone is on, on the ball? So it's an idiomatic expression. Um, and I'm thinking whether that is a British expression. Maybe it is. I don't know, maybe the, the Americans don't don't know don't use it so if you're on the ball what does it mean has anyone else heard of that expression you're on the ball yeah so it's um i'm waiting for vasiliki to share but okay so um fatty what do you mean gracias a la vida thank you to life uh, that's my uh, translation. Uh, so, so I'm thinking I'm in the game or something. Vivid. Ah, uh, okay, interesting. Actually, no. If you're on the ball, it. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, there. Here's Rosie. You've reached your target. If you're on the ball, it means you are very. Um, if you're on the ball, it means you're very up to date. You are ahead of the game. Yes, you're in not in the game, actually ahead of the game. You know, very on the ball. You you are alert to things. You are knowledgeable, but you're also alert with what is happening. Yeah, so maybe things are changing. There is a situation you're dealing with and that keeps changing. And then you maybe you're in the meeting and um, your boss is saying, well, you know, there are these situations that are going on and they're happening. And then you offer some information. And the goes, yeah, you're really on the ball. You're really up to date with that information. You're, you're keeping ahead of the game, another expression, or ahead of the, um, um, you know, you're always making sure you are up to date with that information. Yeah, so even better than that. Yes, yeah, so you're, uh, you're competent. Ah, uh, not so much competent because competent suggests um, that yes, to be on the ball means you're someone who's competent. But no, um, it it is just saying that you are um, you are forever making sure that you are informed of whatever situation you're in. And yes, you are efficient. Yes. Oh, he's really on the ball, you know. And also, so if someone's on the ball, it could also mean that they are reliable. You can count on them, you know, if, if some, you know, there's a fast moving situation, you need, you need people like that in your team because they're on the ball. They'll keep pace with the information or with the changing uh, scenario, the situation that's going on. So, you know, yeah, great. Very nice um, idiomatic expression to be on the ball. So make a note of that and maybe next time if you see it, just look at the context in which um, that situation um, occurred and think okay so what does that mean now one of the things I always recommend my all of you to do is have a look at the Cambridge online dictionary also the Oxford online dictionary and put these in as an expression because often they have the idiomatic expression and that can help you understand those expressions but then of course what will help you reinforce that expression is by you will see it you know, so the more you read, the more you listen, you will hear it. And on the ball is a very um, high frequency expression because when we're talking about business, we're talking about politics, we're talking about um, current affairs, people need to be on the ball. They need to be alert. They need to be up to date with information. Excellent. So finally, people, ladies and gentlemen, the final reason is because you really don't have a choice not to get engaged in, in small talk unless you want to live on a small island isolated from the world around you and if you're particularly um, unfriendly you're not interested in doing business you're not interested in growing your business you're not interested in growing your business circle your social circle then you are going to have to get involved in small talk and there are different techniques that you can do them there are different ways that if you're an introvert you're an extrovert you can you know especially if you're an introvert how to get involved with small talk and i will be talking more about that not just for this month but gradually i will pick up this whole topic of small talk 
as we go on in in you know in the next few months because it's a never ending um topic that is you can never exhaust the topic of small talk so it's all, always great now i want to go back to just before we finish this lesson to go back to what jerson was saying about how some tips on how to end small talk conversations and i'd like to ask you my fellow e waters what tips could you share with jerson on how to end a conversation a small talk conversation what are some good tips i shared with you some of them last week i don't know whether you remember or whether you have your own tips could you share them here in the comments box so some tips you know it's always good not to just end the conversation but you know so if you've been engaging in the conversation you've been following it and now you need to come to end the conversation for whatever reason how could you do it in a positive way because you want to leave a good impression on that person so what ways could you do it one of the ways could be you know i really enjoyed chatting to you um it's fascinating i've learned so much um do you have a business card you know um it'd be great and i hope to see you maybe at the next conference at the next meeting but it was great talking to you thank you so much um or maybe it could be um you know thank you so much for that recommendation uh i i'm definitely going to use it do you have an email address maybe we can stay in touch and i'll let you know how i got on with that recommendation but you know often it's just good you know you just got to finish or you could just so sort of say um well it's been good talking to you i now need to go to my next meeting or i just need to make a phone call um so you know great talking to you um hope to see you uh soon or if you're never going to see them again great talking to you i was a delight exchanging ideas with you i hope we can repeat the experience i hope we can repeat that yeah oh it was great oh it was great to meet you or oh, to finally meet you thank you so much really enjoyed our chat um so anyway take care and uh, you know see you some other time you know or you know uh, maybe we can keep in touch through email or through whatsapp you know there are different ways but yes do end it with uh thanking the person for their time commenting about how the conversation went so jerson what you could do is think of those scenarios in which you found yourself in small talk and it could be also even in your own language imagine how you closed those um those conversations in your own language and imagine doing them in a similar way in english and the scenario will be similar so i'd love to talk for longer but i need to be in a meeting in 5 minutes great me excellent i'd love to talk longer but i need to go you know so take thank you so much see you soon bye yeah great and it's similar also on a telephone how you can end a conversation I, it's funny because one another I'm mentioning my mom today a lot but one of the things my mother always teases me at when we have a telephone conversation or on WhatsApp or FaceTime um she will say right okay we're going now and I never seem to want to end the conversation I keep going my mom and my my husband goes your mother has been trying to say goodbye and trying to end this conversation forever so don't follow me you don't want to have a conversation with me because i never end the conversation and i'll go yeah my mom just one other thing just one other thing but of course in business no you just say i'd love to talk longer but i need to go um if the maybe the conversation is boring then yeah use that also that could be great if you love to talk about have a meeting in 5 minutes maybe you don't have one but it's a great excuse to to leave um Oh, oh you know or you see someone else oh i must just speak to that person you know great talking to you uh you take care enjoy the conference or enjoy the the evening or whatever it is and off you go yeah so different tips but again i always say to my clients it's not going to be very different from the situation you find yourself in in your own language so all you're doing is then reimagining the situation in english and then putting some words in it so they don't have to be complicated words Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your attention. We've come to 5 minutes to 4, and I want to say thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for your participation and engaging in this class with me. I 
Hope you found it useful. I hope you liked Christina's six reasons, which is, let's recap, that you don't know where that conversation is going to take you. So why not start with that conversation? Who knows? That may, you, may lead you to more business, may, may lead you to, in, in, you know, um, uh, meeting someone new or to a new contract or to a new recommendation. Because it's going to improve your English. If you don't have any other opportunities to have practice, use small talk to practice your English. Because it's friendly, it's awesome, it's cool, it's intriguing, it's exciting, it's enjoyable. Use that. It's enjoyable what? To talk about your weekend, to talk about, to share a funny experience that happened to you, to, to, to talk about your hobbies, to talk about, um, you know, current affairs, who knows, whatever you're talking about, or to talk about books, to talk about movies, I don't know, anything that you enjoy talking about anything but business and it makes you approachable it makes you a friendly person it makes you a person that people want to do business with people do business with people they like people they can relate to so be that person and you've got to use small talk for that because you'll learn something you could be in danger of learning something isn't that wonderful? Through talking to people, you discover new things, you discover new approaches. Maybe you'll learn a new way, a new shortcut. You know, you're talking to someone and I say, well, I, I must go. I, I'm trying to get to such and such place. And they go, oh, right. Do you know the way? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to take, oh, but do you know there's a shortcut? Really? Is that? God, I've been doing this route for uh, ages. I never knew there was a shortcut. Oh, thank you so much. I didn't know. Maybe you're in a business meeting and you're about to go off to your next meeting and they offer you a shortcut. They go, yeah, yeah, there's another way. Are you by car or are you walking? No, I'm walking. Right, okay, now if you take this road and then you turn left and then you turn right, you've learned a new route. Wonderful. And because you don't have a choice. Yeah, if we want to do business, we want to get good business, we want to get more clients, we want to grow our businesses, we need small talk. So let's all join each other, share ideas, because sharing grows our mindset. Sharing also means that we care about each other. And don't forget, be a very good listener. Listen to what people are saying and react to it. The more we listen, the more we react, and the more they give you ideas on how to keep that conversation going. In my book, that's exactly what I show you how to do. Picking up what people have said and then responding to that. And there are great ways to do that. So stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be looking at the um, sneak peeks. I'm going to be sharing sneak peeks in the book because it'll be during my sales period. And I'm going to be showing you some scenarios and how you handle those scenarios and the situations. So don't forget to join me next week, the 24th of January, same place, same time, 3 p.m. GMT, which is GMT plus zero, which is the London time, and where we'll be looking at some sneak peeks, looking at that book. But if you have any questions on Small Talk, do. If, do ask me. And if you're in the AWOT community, you will get the next email, the weekly lesson tomorrow on some questions you could ask that could spice up your small talk to make you look even more interesting to ask more interesting questions. Thank you so much for joining today's class, Lesson 51. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, May. Thank you, Keiko. Thank you, Gabi. Thank you, Vasiliki. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you, whoever I'm missing. May, I think I've mentioned you. Um, am I missing anybody else? If you haven't show, show you know, um, Jason, thank you so much. And I hope I managed to answer your questions about how to close small talk conversations. Anyway, to all of you, thank you for, for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will see you hopefully within the EWOT community. But stay tuned as I give you more information about Small Talk to Go 2018 with that audiobook. Ciao for, to you all. Thank you very much for listening. See you next week. Ciao.